whether or not you like the design that System76 is going for with the new Cosmic Desktop, it's pretty hard to stop paying attention to what they're doing, especially now that they're making some pretty big promises about their future goals. So if you have no idea what Cosmic is and why we're talking about it, you might think Cosmic is just an extension of their existing Cosmic GNOME modifications, but no, the new Cosmic DE is a whole separate thing, not even forked from Mudder, and not even based on WL Roots. It is based on a whole new Wayland Compositor library called Smithy, built entirely around Rust and Rust GUI toolkits, with the main toolkit being Iced. So any of the existing GNOME tooling which is built in GTK they want to include in their new environment needs to be rebuilt in their new toolkits. Now there is some tooling being worked on to help simplify this process, but either way, it is going to be a massive endeavor. Along with this, just earlier today, they announced the introduction of another toolkit. This toolkit being called Slint. A great start to the week, PopOS Official will collaborate with us to offer Slint as an alternative toolkit for application development on Cosmic Desktop. Now, you've very likely never heard of Iced or Slint. A lot of these Rust GUI toolkits are still very new, and PopOS is kind of the bleeding edge in getting them out to the public. Now, while building a whole new environment is a massive expenditure, let alone a massive time sink, it does avoid a lot of the baggage that existing environments have. Say, for example, collaborating with those projects when they might have completely different goals from what you're trying to achieve. And in a recent blog post from System76, they explain what some of those goals actually are. The new composite will have better integration and provide better support for features like high DPI, HDR and fractional scaling. Now we'll get to HDR in just a moment. High DPI and fractional scaling are basically two pieces to the exact same puzzle. And according to MM Stick, one of the engineers working at System76, doing this is not going to be that difficult, unlike certain um, other GUI toolkits. GTK does not support fractional scaling on the toolkit level. It relies on the compositor for this support, which is why they look kind of blurry if you closely inspect it. Iced, on the other hand, natively supports fractional scaling and we can get more accurate pixel precision than Cairo. Now it is kind of amusing that he says that as like a really big feature for Iced. In reality, basically every modern GUI toolkit that isn't GTK also supports fractional scaling. GTK is just left in the wind and is probably going to support it in like GTK5 whenever that happens. Now, there's also been the recent merger of the Wayland fractional scaling protocol. So by the time the Cosmic Desktop is actually ready to ship out to the users, this should all be fine. Whereas HDR, high dynamic range on the other hand, is a very, very big claim for Linux. I've got a full video coming out very soon about the state of HDR on Linux, but the short of it is, in the context of the desktop, it's not. There's just not HDR. There is an early protocol in the works for Wayland, but it's still a very long way out. There is some basic support for sending HDR data in Western, but it's not ready to be used to actually display HDR data. So hopefully if System76 is taking this seriously, any of the work they do involving HDR, involving getting it working in their compositor, they do try to send it to upstream projects for everybody else in the Linux space to properly make use of it. But one thing I can say with like 99.999 continuous percent certainty is if they do have this HDR support, it is only going to be under the Wayland session. I find it incredibly unlikely they're going to make massive changes to the Xorg codebase to support it under the Xorg version. Mixed in with giant claims like this, there are some far less surprising features like tiling, for example. 
along with this bit further down, having sensible behavior across multiple monitors. Deciding whether you want to have dynamic or static workspaces, so either adding new workspaces as you need them, or a set number of workspaces. The behavior of stacking windows, so a floating window, and shortcuts for doing your tiling. Now it needs to be said, but the new Rust Cosmic Desktop isn't supposed to be this whole new separate thing different from what they were already doing, which was Cosmic, which is GNOME with some theming and a bunch of plugins. This new Rust Cosmic Desktop is supposed to be a lot like that experience, taking what is good, improving upon it, and giving the users the best experience possible. It's supposed to feel familiar, but not exactly the same. But besides the HDR claim, the other claim I'm very curious about is this one. Much time will be spent to ensure a smooth experience on NVIDIA hardware. Now, considering the fact there are NVIDIA users using Wayland, and it seems like GNOME is probably the best experience, it's not impossible. But also seeing as though the drivers that everybody is using is the proprietary drivers, it's unclear how much of the Wayland issue is the drivers and how much is the desktops themselves. But I'm sure on the desktop side, optimizations can be done to make things run a little bit smoother. What I'm ultimately saying is I'll believe that when I see it. I would like NVIDIA users to have a good experience of Wayland and a good experience on Pop OS and Cosmic, but, you know, it is a whole new environment, and I expect this is going to be a learning process and a big development process to get it to that point where it's actually stable. But they're also making some big claims regarding their panel, dock, whatever you want to call it. As part of the switch to ICE, we're also building a panel slash dock that allows third-party applets to seamlessly integrate with it. Meaning you could have a live system stats, a media player, or even Doom running right there in your dock. Now, I don't know how much of this is hyperbole and how much of this they've actually, you know, designed and tested, Maybe they've tried running Doom in their dock, for example. But most panel system, most dock systems have some form of applet support. But many of them are fairly limited. Not having any sort of animation system, not having any sort of way to handle events outside of basic, like, click events, maybe click with one mouse button, click with another mouse button, maybe even like a multi-click, but usually not much more than that. So if that idea of running Doom isn't just pure hyperbole, and there is something to that, I'm very curious to see what it actually has in store for us. Now, while I do hope the HDR stuff they're working on does ultimately get upstreamed, there is other stuff they're working on that is already being upstreamed. While we're building a desktop environment from scratch, that doesn't mean we're inventing all the code that goes into it. Open source allows us to use and collaborate with existing projects to jumpstart our own work, build from it, and contribute back to the original projects. With our Cosmic DE updates going forward, we'll link to some of our upstream contributions to projects like Iced and WInit so that people can see for themselves the collective benefit of creating open source software. Now, most of these aren't individual contributions. These are searching by those specific authors. So there might be like, you know, a bunch of things there that are also being upstream, some of which are being merged, some of which, you know, don't get merged because they just don't care enough upstream. And another thing they included is an updated look at one of their existing applications. This is for workspace settings. And I know some people aren't a big fan of the coloring they're doing or the way their icons are shaped, but keep in mind, everything is still very much alpha right now. All of the padding and stuff like that can be changed. I think when it comes to the colors, at least in the dark theme, it looks really good. When I look at this, it screams Pop OS. It might not be your personal favorite style, but I can instantly tell where this is coming from. And they have another example over on Twitter. Now this is also once again, very early, but it is demonstrating the way that a sidebar in the settings menu may function. This I think was thrown together in like a single night. So don't expect it to be absolutely perfect. Also, they have a couple of custom icons made, and I think they look pretty good as well. 
But there is one other neat thing in this picture as well. If you're a gesture enjoyer, there is going to be gesture support as well. This is demonstrating the four finger gestures, but there is talk of doing three finger gestures as well. How customizable this is going to be, I'm not really certain, but I would imagine your basic tiling behaviors like swapping between desktops, maybe swapping focus, maybe moving windows around, things like that. I don't personally use a laptop, I don't personally use a trackpad, but if I did, I do like having gesture support there, at least as an option. While Cosmic is still a fairly long way away from prime time, a fairly long way away from just shipping to the regular user, it seems like it's coming along pretty well, and System76 wants to address a lot of these issues that plague Linux and plague the Wayland desktop. So if they can actually do it, that would be crazy. Once again, I'll believe it when I see it, but I'm certainly keeping a close eye on it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use Pop OS? Are you going to try out the new Cosmic Desktop when it's properly available? Or do you just not care and have no idea why you watch this video? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Celery, Barrow, Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.